Hello! Welcome to Frightfully Forgotten Horror Movies, and we are kicking off October with our first Halloween special. All of October will be Halloween special, stuff we usually don't do. Yeah. And we usually don't do top tens and countdowns and stuff like that, so we're going to change the script a little bit. <laughs> and today we're going to be doing ten sequels that we think, or at least an argument could be made, that are actually better than the original movie. This is meant to bring up some debate. Oh, definitely. Yeah, we'll get some shit. Yeah, like some of it is kind of a given, but some of it is like, well, it's personal preference, and some of it is like an argument could be made that this is better than the first. Yeah, so we're gonna try to make a good argument on these ones. But before we get started, what are we drinking? We're drinking uh, my high test Baltic Porter Dance Macabre. We're gonna go in chronological order on this one too. So we're not playing favorites necessarily, it's just when they were released. Number one on our list. Dracula's Daughter, 1936. Which we covered this year. The Bela Lugosi version <laughs> is, of course, a classic. Yeah. But we felt the sequel, Dracula's Daughter, had a lot more things going for it. Well, it's paced better. Yeah. It has a score. There's music. Which makes it a bit more enjoyable and less kind of... Uh, mm -hmm. The social commentary and the, the, the story and the idea is way more original than Dracula because Dracula has been played out. You That's know? right, yeah. The characters are a lot more vibrant, Yeah, I find. The story, right? And there's that innuendo... Even for, for 1936, so we're talking almost 100 years, there's that innuendo -y story about her maybe being a lesbian too, right? Or bisexual or yeah. whatever, but that is pretty in your face for 1936. Yeah. There were no templates for sequels in the 30s. This is one of the first sequels ever. Yeah. And a perfect example of a sequel not just redoing the first one yeah exactly it's anything but the first one yeah it's it's it feels very fresh it has a fresh idea a fresh look fresh feeling to it the atmosphere is great yep everything it's just a fantastic movie yep and we find it more enjoyable than the first the next one on our list is we're jumping decades i've listened to it for a decade decades dawn of the dead 1978 which is Technically a sequel to Night of the Living Dead. You can tell that George A. Romero has grown immensely as a filmmaker and a storyteller between night and dawn. Yeah, it's night and day, it is, yeah. <laughs> basically, you yeah. know. Yeah. Yeah. This movie just is leaps and bounds ahead of any of his previous work. The social commentary, just the fact that he teamed up with horror legend Dario Argento, and the score yeah. helps to pace the movie perfectly. Much better score, yeah. Yeah. Better setting. Yeah. You know, you know, the, the setting, the boarded up old house, you know, it's kind of cliche. Yeah. But to use a mall as the setting is completely original. Mm-hmm. And again, that has a lot to do with the social commentary too. It's perfect. They have the world at their fingertips, but yet they really can't have or enjoy any of, any of it. Yeah, yeah characters in Night of the Living Dead are pretty damn good. Mm. But I'd say the characters in Dawn of the Dead are even better. They're, they're more fleshed out. They're deeper. Mm -hmm. You know, Cooper is a great character in Night of the Living Dead, and so is Ben. But yeah. that's just two. And here we have more characters that are just as good. Franny, who's pregnant. Yeah. So that's a huge deal, right? The end of the world here. Yeah. There's no doctors around. How do you deal with that? And she's surrounded by men who are making the decisions for her. That's a big deal. Overall, it's just a much better film, we find. You know, Night of Living Dead is classic. Yeah. But Dawn of the Dead is a superior film. Yeah. <laughs> and it takes that whole world just above and beyond. To the next level. Dawn of the Dead is the movie that all zombie movies after tried to emulate and be better than, or at least be as good as. That's right, it yeah. really set the standard. And number three on our list, Friday the 13th, part two. We have said before on this channel and privately to ourselves that we find part one kind of just blah and boring. The effects are great, mm -hmm. don't get us wrong. The mystery of it is great too. Yeah, yeah that great mystery that everyone knows about now, the, the <laughs> twist at the end. Yeah. But for us, we think part two is a better horror movie. 
That's right. Yeah. And it expands too. Like it takes the ideas from the first movie, right? Because in the first movie, Jason is the reason why the mother is killing. Yeah. But in this movie, they bring Jason to the mix. The great thing about part two is it's still a mystery. Like yeah. everyone knows now, but when if you were to watch it for the first time when it first came out, you wouldn't really know it's Jason until later on in the movie. It could be anybody. It's yeah. still got that mystery factor to yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The way it's filmed, yeah. the way it's shot. That backstory of Jason by him living in the woods and being yeah. some weird recluse hillbilly yeah. kind of thing with the bag on his head. like All that's more scary than anything in the first. That's right, yeah. yeah. It's paced better, I think. Mm -hmm. The characters are better than the first. The kills are better. Yeah, it's just... Overall, I think that they learned from the first one and improved on everything in the second. The only thing that part two is missing really is Tom Savini's effects. Like if, if he would have done the effects, I think it would have been yeah. a much superior movie. But one of the only reasons that Friday the 13th one works is Tom Savini. Yeah, it's, not, it's... not Kevin Bacon? No, not Kevin Bacon. <laughs> it's Tom Savini. The Netflix show, the movies that made us. Yeah talked a lot about how like the director was clueless he didn't know yeah. what he was doing tom savini basically guided the whole yeah, thing yeah yeah y'all directed a lot of yeah. those scenes and shit yeah so no, part two definitely improved on what part one fumbled through and happened to make work by chance that's right you know? the next one on our list and we may get a bit of flack for this one too this one's always controversial is we enjoy Nightmare on Elm Street Part 2 more than the first. That's right. The commentary that it manages to create. Jesse. Jesse! Can't stop it, you're being ridiculous. Jesse! Jesse! <laughs> Jesse! He's struggling internally with this sexuality, yeah. right? And I love how Freddy is a predator and they use that idea for him to prey on Jesse's weakness. Yeah. And how they managed to do that and bring Freddy into the real world. Part one, like the dream sequences mm -hmm. are a big hallmark of that. Yeah. But it's obvious that they're dream sequences because things that could never really happen start happening. So you, you don't question that this isn't really happening. Mm -hmm. But in part two, the lines are blurred a lot more. So you don't know if this is really happening or if this is in a dream. They do it's, such it's, a good it's, job. It's so much, and that makes it scarier that you don't know if this is a dream or if it's really happening. That's right. And they also keep Freddy in the shadows a lot more. He's scary. This is Freddy at his scariest. Yeah, yeah. He's darker, predatorial a lot more. He's so, not goofy. He's not jokey. No. Ooh, ooh, ah, ah, ah. Ooh. Yeah, yeah. With the long arms. Looks all stupid. He has less screen time. And I like the fact that Freddy is trying to break into the real world through Jesse. He's yeah. possessing Jesse. Not just the same cliche which every other movie did after that he's just killing people in their dreams. Yeah, that's no, boring. He's trying to get out. More people talk about part two now than any other part as far as how important it was mm -hmm. to you know, like the gay community and all this stuff in the commentary. Yeah. Like part two is the most discussed part of yeah. the, the, the franchise. Yeah, but it also it still gets shit on, or, or it gets left, like completely left out of lists. Yeah. It's like, it, it doesn't deserve that. It deserves yeah. a lot more praise than what yeah. it gets. And you know what really fucking pisses me off? Is when people say, that's the gay one. <laughs> and, and leave it at that. It's like, that. What, what the fuck does that mean? Yeah. That's the gay one. Well, that's all you're judging it on? You couldn't be more close-minded than, yeah, that. than that. Yeah. And next on our list is 1986's Aliens. Aliens? Yeah, Aliens. You know, the James Cameron sequel. I thought the... we weren't going to talk about Aliens. Well, it's, you know, the sequel to the famous 79 horror movie. Even that's not horror. People always say that <laughs> Alien is horror. It's not horror. It's sci-fi. Okay, okay, okay. Let's not fight any more about this. Last time we fought about it, I came out of it bruised and battered, all right? Look what I found! I'll get it off! Tool shed. Hmm, 
violent to deadly. Perfect. We'll bury that son of a bitch! I'll get it off! I'll get it off! I'll get it off! I didn't know it was a plushie. I was just trying to get it off your face. Yeah, my face. You didn't have to kick me in the ribs and my spine. You know how long I spent in the hospital? Months. Well, since aliens is off the list and the face huggers off your face, we will now move on to the next on our list, and that is Evil Dead 2, 1987. A lot of people think that it might be a complete remake of the first one, right? It follows them getting to the cabin again and all yeah. that, but it really isn't. No, they just didn't have the rights to use the footage <laughs> from the first one, so they had to do a quick recap. Yeah. But it's it's really like, it, it an argument can be made for this one, because Evil Dead is a better horror movie than Evil Dead 2. Yeah. But Evil Dead 2 is one of the best horror comedies of all time. They're two completely different movies. Yeah. Like, really, when you look at them, Evil Dead 1 is pure horror. I would say pretty much oh, pure with horror. With a little bit of comedy. Yeah. Just the peppered in. Just a little bit. Yeah. But Evil Dead 2 manages to add that comedy spin on it. And the thing that makes Evil Dead 2 maybe just a little better is the fact that they managed to set that up for Army of Darkness as well, yeah. right? So they wanted to continue the franchise. And you really get Sam Raimi and Bruce Campbell really just like hitting their stride in this. This movie really set the standard for what a Sam Raimi movie is. It's like, you want to watch a Sam Raimi movie? Well, Evil Dead 2 is the That's right. Sam Raimi movie. It's funny, it's scary, the pacing. You watch this movie, it feels like it's done in an hour. Yeah. Or less. Yeah, you're never bored. That it's paced so well. And the effects are great, they're better than the first. Mm -hmm. The characters, I think, are better than the first, because they're they're a, little, a bit more <laughs> silly, but yeah. they're more memorable. That's like, right. Like, you know, Jake and all that stuff, they're all much more memorable characters than the first. Yeah, yeah, and even the Evil Dead, too. Yeah. Like with the witch Henrietta. The Deadites are yeah. more memorable, yeah. Come to Henrietta. And she, he all kicks her in the gut. Yeah. It's <laughs> like in that, like it's just a, dirty. It's a much more entertaining movie than the Ooh. first. And if we're going to put an Evil Dead movie on to watch in the background or whatever, it's usually going to be part two. <laughs> That's right, yeah. Next on our list, 1987's Prom Night 2. This one manages to go in a completely different direction than the original, right? Completely different story. Yeah, everything. And yeah. it manages also to include supernatural aspects into the story. So it really doesn't have much to do with the original. No, not at all. It's, it's kind of a standalone. It is standalone. It's it's part two by name only. Yeah. But it is, in our opinion, a much better film. Like, part one is pretty cookie cutter. Yeah kind of boring it's got the cool scene at the end with the disco dance and the decapitation the head sitting on the but that's really all <laughs> that movie has going for it in part two it's like a completely different movie dead prom queen coming back mm -hmm. after a horrible accident it's way more original yeah yeah and the, the effects are really good yeah the way they managed to do that there's that one scene where the lockers all crushed together, you know, and, and kill the girl yeah. hiding in the locker. Yeah. <laughs> That's right, yeah. So the effects are top notch. The story is better. The pacing is be much way better. Way better. And it's got Michael Ironside in it, <laughs> yeah. for Christ's sake. Come so on. There you go. <laughs> Prom Night 2, 
I would say miles better than the first. Much more enjoyable. The next on our list is Phantasm 2 from 1988. And you're going to notice a little trend here in the next few mm -hmm. movies where it's kind of all the same thing. Where it's like, it's a different movie than the first. Yeah. Which kind of makes it a little better depending on your tastes. So Phantasm 1 was pretty dark. It was pretty original pretty too. Pretty original you know? at the time. It took him forever to make the movie. Yeah. Which I think doesn't help it as far as like the flow of the movie goes. Because they shot it over the span of like I think a couple of years. Mm. Just like weekends and yeah. stuff like that. Mm. So it, it, it's really like the, the fact that Phantasm 1 was made and finished and turned out as good as it did is amazing. Yep. But Phantasm 2 is like a different level. It's a different movie, and just to me, it's a bit more enjoyable in far as it's like more of an action adventure horror. Again, like a good sequel should do, they managed to use elements from the first movie and elevate them, right? Yeah. Takes that shit to the next level. It uses the tall man and creates a lore out of it and yeah. something that they that the characters in the movie explore. And I like how they flip it on, on its ass where like the tall man isn't really hunting them. They're hunting the They're, tall man. Yeah, exactly. And it's like a yeah. it's like a adventure road movie where they're on the road fucking tracking down the tall man. Yeah. But you still get like the eighties montage where they gotta, you know, suit up and yeah. get their weapons and shit. Yeah. Um, it has a lot of wicked action scenes. The effects are like top notch. Phantasm is a better horror movie, but Phantasm 2 is a better overall package. Yeah. <laughs> of like the 80s horror comedy action package. It has it all. Yeah. Got Reggie having sex with that. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> He's like, oh, oh. The only thing is that, you know, too bad that the original actor for Mike mm. couldn't come back and reprise his role. Or he, 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 not that couldn't, they, they didn't, didn't want, want him. Yeah. <laughs> Which I, like what, oh, whatever. I mean, the movie is still awesome anyways. Yeah, so. but it, it is too bad. That's the one strike against Yeah. Him. Next on our list, 1988's Poltergeist 3. <laughs> this one might be a source of contention because we all know everybody likes the first one, right? And Go read the comments on our <laughs> Poltergeist episode, how we shit all over it and people shit all over us. Yeah, yeah, and that's fine. You think we walked into their house and like kicked their dog or something? <laughs> like, it's a, it's a fucking movie. Then you have the second one, right, which... It's pretty much the first. It's pretty much the first. It, I think it's a little better, you know? It's, it's still pretty stupid. They're all flying through that dimension. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's dumb. And then you come to the third one, which is a lot more grounded. The other two movies are just gone, right? They're brushed aside. But that seems to help this movie, actually, because you don't have all that baggage yeah. and all that shit to have to lean on. So this movie can start completely fresh. And it goes in a completely different and new, fresh direction. I love that the the change of setting mm -hmm. is, is so nice in this movie because even when Poltergeist 1 came out, the haunted house kind of trope was like, oh God, another yeah. haunted house movie? Yeah. The number two, another haunted house movie. And three, it's in a sky rise, a brand new sky yeah, rise. Yeah. Which is taking that whole technology of the 80s, yeah, you know, yeah. idea. It's just a nice change of pace, change of setting. I think the characters are better, too, yep. in the third one. They're more likable. Yeah. Like, I like the aunt and uncle, and I like the cousins and all that stuff, and it's just, I, I kind of, I like these people more, Yeah. you know? Yeah, they managed to use the, the whole uh, high-rise setting to their advantage for the movie. The effects in the first two movies are really good. We never said anything bad about the effects in the first movie, they're top notch. But the effects in this movie, I think are a bit smarter. Yeah. They're a bit more trickier. It's more like magic. Yeah, yeah. The mirrors and all that kind of stuff. It's real kind of cool movie magic stuff. For the third movie, they have even less effects, but the effects they do have are more effective. The next one on our list is another movie we've covered this year, mm -hmm. and that is Stepfather 2 from 1989. And again, it's one of those things that argument can be made. Yeah. Stepfather 1 is probably a better, just like straightforward thriller 
movie, mm -hmm. but Stepfather 2 kind of like is a better 80s slasher and a bit yeah. more enjoyable in the way that it's a bit more colorful, the characters are a bit more fleshed out and lively. The first one is a tad cryptic on who the stepfather really is, you know? Yeah. They don't really delve into that. And then the second one, as a good sequel should, it delves more into his character, yeah. who he is, what he's all about, right? Yeah. So you learn more and it expands. We mentioned in the in our Stepfather 1 and 2 review. Which did shitty. Yeah. Probably. So go watch it because it did really <laughs> fucking bad. They go hand in hand. Mm -hmm. And like, I'd love to do a, like a, a two hour fan edit where you take the best of both mm -hmm. and make them one really solid two hour movie. Get rid of all the fluff and it's just bang, bang, bang. I like this one a little more because it's just simply a little more exciting. One thing that the first one does have over the second, Jonathan Brandis is okay, <laughs> yeah. but the first, she's much better. They're both enjoyable, but Stepfather 2 is a better 80s horror movie. <laughs> and the tenth and final one on our list is 2005's Saw 2. The more I watch Saw 1, the first one, the less I like it. I remember liking it really the first time I saw it. Every viewing after, it's like, yeah, yeah, I don't, I don't know, like, I, I, well, it was, it was done on a low budget, yeah. and it was done on a very strict yeah. uh, timeline, and it was done well, yeah. But I see the holes now in right. Saw One, but right. Saw Two, I think, has ten times the rewatchability yeah. in Saw One. Yeah, and really, what this one does is it elevated the bar so high for the Saw series that they could never yeah. come close all, to it all, after. All the sequels after were garbage. Yeah. It's basically the first one times 10. But another really good thing that the second one has is that there's more Jigsaw. There's mm -hmm. more John Kramer. He is way more developed. Like, he's a character in this movie. He's not really in the first one. Yeah, not really. He's kind of in it, but in this... He is a character, and it's and he's a character you you start to like as a bad guy, mm -hmm. which is an odd thing. You like him as a bad guy, and you're like, he's kind of cool. Yeah, he <laughs> takes a fucking beating, and he still <laughs> and he still yeah. has a fucking plan. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't get that in the first one. Acting's better in this one. I think the characters are better in part two. The traps are better. Yeah. The reason for everything is it, better. It's more concise. It's paced out better. You know, Danny Glover's in the first one. Kind of misused. Oh, you know, yeah, like super misused. The one yeah. great actor they have. Carrie Elvis in the first movie, like, just let him keep his fucking original British accent. Right, yeah. That fake American accent just wrecks <laughs> kind of his performance. All that is stuff that I don't see in the second. Yeah. I'm not watching stunted, forced performances in the second. Again, they expand on the reason for what John Kramer does. He puts the answer to the clues right in front of your face. All Donnie Wahlberg had to do Sit. Is sit and listen for an hour and a half, yeah. and you'll find your son in a secure and safe place. Yeah. And he couldn't do that. Yeah. So it speaks to his character. You're not worthy. Yeah. That that is way more poignant than the first movie. That sit and listen to what I have to say. Yeah. And you'll find your son in a safe place. He couldn't do it. That's way more like to the point than anything in the first movie. Yeah. Part one is all about that last. 10 minutes. Saw 2 seems like more, it's, it's all about the whole experience. It's not just mm -hmm. about getting to that scene. Yeah. It's about the whole movie. That's right, yeah. The, and it's it's the dynamic between all the characters, which is really, um, it's it was a good idea that they chose to have a whole group of people. An in ensemble, scene. right? Yeah. 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 Very cubish. Yeah. You can see that yeah. they're influenced by cube. That's right. And yeah. so it's not only John Kramer's traps that they got to watch out for, it's themselves. Themselves. And that, that elevates the movie. Exactly. And makes it a bit more cerebral. You know? Yeah. It's not just yeah. about him. It's about these other people, too. And the funny thing about it, the most ironic thing about this movie and all the ones in the whole series is that all they had to do was work together and listen. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. That's all they had to do. <laughs> and this movie uh, it does solidify Jigsaw, John Kramer, as a badass. A badass horror icon. Yeah. 
And he's kind of in the first movie, but the first movie doesn't make him an icon. This movie makes mm. him an icon. So that is our list of what we think are 10 horror sequels that are better, more enjoyable, or that an argument can be made that are more fun than the original movie. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot on this list that are definitely arguable. Debatable. We're gonna but get shit. We're doing that for a reason. We want to talk about this, have a debate, and you know, everyone has their favorites. Yeah, that's right. So let us know in the comments what you think, and until next time, keep drinking.